Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and I wanted to talk about the cargo and item interaction update that CIG released the other day when they released the whole series. Um, outside of just being interesting stuff, I know that there's going to be a lot of you that don't have time or interest to actually read everything, so I'm going to try and give you the quick summary and opinions on some of this stuff. So, when it comes to interacting with cargo, we know that it's going to be big, and for ships like the whole series, there's going to be a lot of it. So, we need to find a way to interact with it effectively and efficiently. Now, there's several different ways they talked about us being able to actually interact with different objects. You know, the first of which is player to item, which is basically your character grabbing objects with one hand or two. Now, think of these things like, or think of these as things like um, what we would normally consider like handheld items, like a cell phone or a can of beer. Uh, CIG's implemented a system with the uh, oh-so-technical name of Grabby Hands, uh, <laughs> which is funny and I love it. It's not taking themselves too seriously. Anyway. Um, basically, it's going to be you look at an item, you press F, and your character's going to pick it up. Pressing F again is going to put it down. Big shocker, right? That's pretty standard stuff. Um, now, when you're doing that, animations are going to play to show your character doing those actions. So it's not like some of the older games where you push a button and then magically you look at your hand and you've got that item in your hand. It's not like that. Now, where things are getting a little bit more interesting is where you press and hold F. Um, and this is what's going to enter uh, precision movement mode, and it's basically going to engage augmented reality like we talked about in the Moby Glass video. And you're going to be able to manipulate and spin this object around in your hands. This is a big deal because it means that there doesn't need to be just one animation done for every single item in the game. It's the way your character is interacting with all the different items in the universe. It's really cool stuff. And what's even cooler is the fact that when we start talking about handling bigger items that require two hands, the system's even going to automatically have your character orient the object in a way that makes it easier for you to carry the item with two hands. Uh, it's just really neat. And all of this control gets to a point where you can even have the ability to flip a coin. Um, but it's not like press F to flip, or like we've seen in some other games, press F to pay respects. Uh, <laughs> but you actually uh, can articulate your arm in a way that's going to toss the coin in the air and cause rotation. That's wild. It kinda, it's crazy. I don't know how they're doing it. Um, they're smarter than I am, though. Uh, items that are, that are actually usable, though, like a gun or a flashlight, can be activated or deactivated by double pressing on F. Now, this is actually going to allow you to store items as cargo instead of just kind of leaving it behind or always having it on or maybe having to wear it on your person. Cargo containers are now in the measurement of SCU, but that's really more about the exterior size of that container. That being said, since every item has a different size and a shape um, and just different values in general, you have what's called ports inside the container and the items being placed in it may take up more than one port or just may take up multiple ports to kind of depending on the size. Um, it's kind of like that old adage or old question, you know, what weighs more, a ton of feathers or a ton of gold? Well, they both weigh the same, but you're not going to fit a ton of feathers in the same space that you're going to fit a ton of gold. It just doesn't work like that. That's mass. So for massive items like a store all box or a giant you know, crate of some form or fashion, um, there's mechanics in place to actually allow you to manipulate that item. For example, you can use some graph plates to actually make moving the pallet, you know, palatable, but um. Uh, however, it's <laughs> so big that you can't really see around it. It's in your way. So if you've been flying in a re uh, Arena Commander and you've tried the landing sequence, you get to see kind of that user interface to help you out since you're not be able to see directly below your ship. Uh, a similar thing is going to be present when we're talking about massive items and being able to see an interface, you know, showing your surroundings and distance, and that's going to really allow you the opportunity to control your pal pallet and place it with precision. Um, containers are even featuring uh, technology like locking plates to ensure they're not just tumbling around inside your cargo hold. Now, speaking of your cargo hold, we get our first real glimpse into how those mechanics are going to work in the game. And the floor of cargo holds is going to be made up of a series of interconnected locking plates. And what these plates are going to do is they're going to hold your cargo in place. Now, where it gets a little bit more specific is that only cargo containers are actually designed to be stacked because they interlock and they maintain that connection together through their own personal grav connections. Um, while you can carry things that are not in containers in a, you know, a cargo hold, um, you know, maybe like a bunch of loose missiles or rockets, they cannot be stacked. Basically, the only thing that will be locked in place are those items that are actually making contact with the floor, that kind of base layer. Now, if you did stack the missiles, and I don't even know if the game's going to actually allow you to try it or not, but let's say you stack missiles on top anyways, those top missiles wouldn't actually end up being locked onto anything. Um, and as you're flying around, they're going to be bouncing around your ship. Who knows, they might explode, but the damage to the inside of the hole may end up destroying your ship from the inside out, which is not good. 
So it sounds like we're going to have control of each individual locking plate, and that's going to allow us to lock things in place and leave others unpowered until it's ready. Um, and all this stuff is really already making loading cargo, which could be a really mundane task, a lot more interesting. Um, now, the plates that are active are going to glow a gold color, but if they're too damaged to work, you're going to notice that they're glowing red. Now, the final piece of this cargo puzzle is your ability to manage it all from the ship's interface, otherwise known as the manifest. Um, now, within this program, you're going to have the ability to activate and deactivate the plates that I just talked about, which is going to give you the ability to secure cargo from the bridge, or maybe you're going to be jettisoning some cargo in the event of pirates. Um, you know, you can also determine the order that you have your cargo placed, which helps if you're kind of making multiple stops. You know, for example, if you're delivering at three places, you don't want the, <laughs> the stuff that you're selling at the first place loaded all the way in the back to where you can't unload it in an easy manner. You know, another way of thinking about it could be maybe you're hauling a bunch of really, really expensive stuff in a freelancer. Um, it may make sense to have some really crap items towards the end that you could eject to maybe distract pirates while you make an escape. Um, that's kind of a gameplay decision, You but it sounds like something that you may be able to do. Um, the last note in regard to all this is how the mass um, is going to impact your ship's performance, not the SCU. Um, you know, so if you're carrying a bunch of heavy stuff, it's going to, you know, obviously impact your ship more than something like a really light object. It kind of goes back to that uh, feathers versus gold message from earlier. So all of that is really awesome, and it's something I'm really excited to see in the, in the engine and something that's in development. And these are the types of things that I really like to see because this kind of helps me picture what the game is going to be like when it comes around. And that level of depth that CIG keeps coming up with is constantly impressive. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have questions about how all this cargo and interaction is going to work, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned for more content. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and I'll catch you all later. Take care.